What's up everybody? This is Dallin with Ride and Reads and today I'm going to be a hand model and also show you how to build your own Bluetooth intercom uh, headsets whether it's for airboats, side-by-sides, tractors, just backing down the boat ramp, whatever it is. Here's a list of the supplies. Uh, pause the video at any time if you need to. Also if something looks too fast I've sped this video up so it's not painfully long. You can go to the little gear setting in the bottom of the YouTube video Click on playback speed and slow it down or speed it up to what you want. I just wanted to give you guys a quick run through of it. Like I said, slow it down, press pause. I've attached steps to each part. So uh, here we go. The first thing you're going to do is get your Cena's or Bluetooth equivalent. Uh, your earmuffs. I used walkers in this video, but I've also used some MPOWs. Um, you can experiment, use whatever you're going to do. But uh, Take your mic mount. Get the sticky mount that goes on a helmet, not the clamp one and uh, don't peel off the adhesive. Yours isn't going to have holes in it and it's also going to have the adhesive backing. I'm reusing my uh, Cena mount off my other headsets just for this video. But Line it up there with where it's going to sit on the headsets. Make sure you can access the holes on the back side of the uh, microphone mount itself so you can attach that together. Go ahead and describe where that fits on there good. Yep, with a pen just like that we're doing it. Alright, so once you get that marked, go ahead and take the mic set back off of it. And uh, you can see mine has two holes in it already. Yours won't have it. You don't need to drill holes and bolt it. That's definitely your own option. Uh, I choose to just so they don't fall apart while I'm out riding or have something come apart. It just makes it more secure. But I will say when I tore these off of my old headsets, it broke the plastic because the sticky mount was working. So you really probably don't need to bolt and drill it. I just do. Anyways, you've seen there, you break it apart. You're going to go ahead and drill through here. And I had two 3mm by 12mm uh, mini machine screws. And make sure they have a low profile head on them so that the, uh, the microphone mount goes back over it. So there's the first one in. Second one, don't drill through your finger. All right, so you got both the screws through there. You're going to go ahead and throw the nuts on the back. Don't over tighten them. You don't want to break the plastic. It's not real sturdy on that mount, but just to secure it better, um, if the adhesive ever goes off, I'm usually out in the rain, uh, bad weather when we're duck hunting. So I just do that for extra security. You can see the bottom mounting tabs there or the bolt holes for the mic adapter. Make sure they're visible um, when you mount that. So you can, uh, I guess, use the Cena bolts later to screw that on there so it stays on. All right, you're going to throw this thing back on there. You're going to wrestle this octopus for a minute. After you get that free, you're going to want to mark where that wire goes into the headset more relaxed. Um, you don't want to pull it too tight or on a sharp corner. So as you can see there, describe that. Leave the foam out. Put the outer earmuff back on it. And uh, it takes some pretty good force to take those apart and put them back together. But that's what it is. So that's why it's really sped up. Uh, it took me forever to get that snap back in. Some of them go easier, some go harder. This one was a stiff one, but it's all good. So let's get that put back together. And is what you're going to do is drill a hole right there where that wire needs to go in. And you want to be more on the, uh, I guess you'd call it the outside of the earmuff, but it needs to be right on that seam so that wire can go through without getting pinched. Very blurry camera, but so that is what it is. So as you drill through there, I'm going to pull it apart. And you're going to see what I mean. There's a lip that the wire's got to go through. Yep, so uh, you're going to turn your drill gun into a Dremel, and it's not going to know the difference, but go ahead and ream that out. and Just make sure you have a clear path for that wire to go through when you snap it back together without getting pinched. There it is, Dremel time. You know, clean up the burrs on that thing. There's probably better methods, but this is what you're getting today. And uh, blurry camera shot again. That'll happen, I guess. 
I do want to note this is the first video I've ever built something like this and if you've seen how awkward it was to stand behind a ring light and a GoPro and try and reach around it without bumping the camera, uh, it's a lot more than you'd think to try and do and I never realized that till now so that's something but same thing here just make sure you clean that out uh, ring it over to where the wire can actually fit through there you want to kind of stay as close to the wire size as possible but also so that the wire can fit through there without getting pinched you don't want to cut the speaker wire and throw that back on there you're going to route the wire in through that hole you just made of the channel for it And uh, you can go either way. You can cut a little path and leave the wire over top of the foam there. On this one, when I cut out the foam, uh, I cut a little deep and I made a hole. So I just put the speaker through the foam. Um, obviously, the more foam you have, the better uh, sound insulation it's going to be. But at the same time, if the speaker's sticking out too far, it's going to push against your ear and lift the muff off of it. And that's actually worse from what I've found. So. Um, and don't be a dummy. Use an X-Acto knife. Like the plier, or I mean the screwdriver, it worked, but you know, it could make it a little cleaner, but it's just ugly on the inside, so nobody's gonna know once you're done. Next time, though, I will be using an inexacto knife, it's pretty shoddy. So, anyways, just tear that out carefully. I tried not to go through it all the way, this time I did a little bit, but it let me put the speaker through it. There you go. Foam cleaned out. Make sure it recesses in there so you have a little more room for your ears. So at least, you know, the earmuffs sit tight against your head instead of being held off. So this is what I mean about going over the top. You can cut out a channel there. Or this one, I just put it through the earmuff. Put it through the foam. And that worked fine. So you're going to put that all back together. You're going to put the outer muff cover back on it. And just test fit it. Make sure, like I said, it's not pushing against your ear. Make sure you don't pinch that wire as you're putting it back together. You don't want to cut that. So get it all back together. Throw them on your head. Make sure that it's all fitting good. And if it is, um, this time I use the sticky mounts, the adhesives that come with the Cena headsets. Or Senna, however it's pronounced. I don't care. But Throw that back in there. Squish it against the foam. Make sure your wire is laid out nice in there and put it all back together again. If you want to, you can glue right now at this step the wire in there. I take them all apart at the end after everything's working and done, but you can go ahead and glue that seam where the wire is going through just for the noise insulation and also the bolt holes if you chose to drill the bolts or to drill and add the bolts. All right, this is where you're going to pull the actual mic adapter to the sticky mount on the earmuffs. Um, don't be a dummy like me. You can see the wires underneath there, but due to some editing magic, I had to take that off and then the wire's fine. But make sure your wire doesn't get pinched under there. Yeah, see, magic. Now the wire's out of there and you never knew, if, except for I told you. All right, so route that wire for the right earmuff over the top. Make sure it's not twisted or anything because it's going to be you know, going in there. So. Route it over the top, same thing, pull this one apart, just reach in and grab and try and get the fat plastic part of the earmuff um, so you don't bend it. But pull that apart, you want to mark this one for the speaker wire to go through at the very top because you want all the slack you can in this wire. Put it back together, it's marked on the top. Same thing as the other side, drill it right there on the seam but more on the outside of the earmuff. Um, you just don't want to drill through and get the actual like cushion part at all, you want it to be on the back side of it or the outside. Pull it back apart and uh, ream it back out again. Same thing as the other side, you're just making that pathway for it to go through. And same thing. Um, if you guys do me a favor, when you pause this video, if you're trying to read the steps on the sides or if you're slowing it down, um, when you get a minute, please hit subscribe. I do want to do some reviews on uh, the cheaper headsets, not just the Senna's. I've built some before out of like the cheaper Amazon models and uh, they worked but they weren't as good but I also didn't build the headsets as nice. So my goal here is just to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start getting monetized. I don't want to take money from you people 
but it does pay me if I get monetized through YouTube and it doesn't come out of your pocket. So if you do me that favor, I really appreciate that and uh, hopefully we can start doing some, I guess, testing because we all want to get it done cheaper and uh, especially when it comes to headsets, we all want them for what we're doing, but you know, they're pricey. So if I can find some other headsets that do work at less of a cost, I think that'd be pretty awesome for all of us. But right now, the Senna has been the, the best thing I've used. And uh, I'm using the SMH-150s. It's more their budget model anyways. I think they're uh, $250 for a pair right now, which is uh, pretty good. If you look around at you know pre-made headsets, the cheapest I've found is $250 for a single headset. So if you can build a pair like with two headsets and the uh, pair of Senna's at you know, 290 bucks for two, two headsets, that's pretty good. All right, so same thing, recess that speaker in there, add the sticky mount. And again, if you wanna glue that on right now, you can. I like to test fit it first, make sure it's not sticking out, make sure everything's comfy. Throw that backing on there. Put the outer earmuff on, test it. Same thing as the other side, pretty simple. But. There it is, this is uh, somewhat of the finished product. The wire loom that I use after this is also optional. But, uh, here's my sealant, it's just some clear waterproof sealant. I mainly just use it so that wire doesn't get pulled in or out or yank the speaker off if something grabs. And to keep the the sound barrier, I guess, you know, if you can't let the air travel through there, should block off some of the sound because I mean, when you take out the foam and everything, it is kind of taking away the, the hearing protection from the earmuffs, but it's nice to be able to talk to people while you're riding. All right, same thing with the other side. I'll get that sealed up. You know, take apart the side with the bolts. I silicone around the bolts too, just for another barrier and it keeps them on there and the wire. I said, you guys can do all this in the very first part if you like the way it fits, you know, so you're not taking them apart, putting them back, but I guess I like to be a little more particular with it and just make sure it's all good. Make sure it's all lined up, so you're not pinching the wire, throw it all back together. Um, like I said, the wire loom being optional, uh, I use it just so the wire can travel back and forth. You know, if you're adjusting the size of the uh, headsets, if somebody's got a bigger head or shorter or going in and out. So I like it to just travel through there loosely. Um, it is kind of bulky though, you can't just zip tie the wires to the headset itself. I don't like it as much, but it's all personal preference. None of this is, uh, you know, by the book, you guys can modify it however you want, but this is just the way I've done it that's worked. I want to say too, nothing's ever this hard until you're recording yourself doing it, man. I've never struggled with wire them so bad, but now everybody can watch it. That's why I sped it up. If you do slow it down, though, it's, it's pretty obvious, even sped up, it, I had a hard time there. All right, so it's all fed through. Um, the best way on the walkers I found with the zip ties was to go all the way through the bottom. I tried a few different ways, but this is the only way I could really see to get it to fit flush, I guess, against it. So two four inch zip ties. Take one all the way through the, the cloth side of the headset or the cloth openings there. There's a little gap at the bottom so where the wires come out for the actual earmuffs. Take it all the way through, get the other one, go over the top, and just try and pull it down flush. Um, Hold down the wire loom pretty good, but don't squeeze it to the point where the, the wire won't travel through it, because that's the whole point of this, is to let that wire kind of free float uh, so it doesn't pull on the speaker or, you know, the wire itself. Measure out your wire loom and cut it before you put the speaker wire through it. But uh, You can see there I've just got like two or three ridges sticking out past where the zip tie is, just so it stays on there. Cut off the ends, make it clean. All 
zip tie uh, both sides of the wire loom down. You can see that travels through there. Squeaky clean. Throw your headset on there and uh, don't get glue in your hair. Yeah, try them out. That's basically it. Um, super usable headsets. The only thing I can say is when I'm at like max volume, or I mean uh, like max throttle on the boat, you can get a little bit of feedback through the boat. So I'm going to work on building something that covers the front of the mic and see if we can't get rid of some of that wind noise. But uh, there it is, finished product. I really appreciate you guys if you've watched this whole time. I know it's a long video, but uh, you know, hopefully it's value to somebody out there. I hope you can build your own stuff and uh, that it gave you a little bit of insight. It's not that hard, and uh, it's just something to do an experiment if you want to save a few bucks or if you just like to build your own things. But again, thank you, everybody. Um, please do subscribe, and uh, let's get this channel moving forward a little bit more. If I can get monetized, that just means more things that I can produce and do for you guys. And I appreciate everybody who's been watching.